Hi, this is Mark Weitzman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Theoretical Physics with Mark Weitzman. I want to continue with our group theory and physics course today. And today we'll do a very important representation. So this is, um, sorry, group theory. And currently we're working through Shannonstead's book. And this is part two, chapter one, the uh, Frobenius or group algebra. This is the second video on this. And it's the regular representation. So, the regular representation is sort of very simple, but it's profound because it leads to some very interesting results. And the regular representation is obtained by using the group elements these the group elements will label them by a1 sorry, A1, A2, AN, N is equal to the order of the finite group, G, and um, we will use these group elements in two different roles. So, First row, they will be um, basis elements. So, if we were using physics notation, if we were using like physics, quantum mechanics, no, Dirac notation, we would represent like the basis elements by AI as a ket, I equal 1. But we're not going to do it here, we're just going to use AI as a basis element. But sometimes this Dirac notation is very helpful and uh, Georgie's book uses that exclusively. Um, and the other role, the second role, is they will be the operators acting on the uh, linear space okay and as we'll see their operation will be via the group multiplication um, via the group multiplication table. 
So, make this more clear. Let's denote L, which is an integer based on two other integers by the requirement that AL is equal to AI AK. So this is just the group multiplication table. And basically, if we multiply, let's say, A2 by A3, how will we label them and call them? And we get A5, then we would say that the integer 5 is the L or L, I, K. So this tells you the relationship. When we multiply AI by AK, we get the element AL. Now, so we define, if we're treating them as operators, we define AI operating on AK. So this is an operator on the space and this is the basis element of the space. And as you know, and I'll make clear later, if we define an operator on every basis element, we've also defined it on every element of the space. And this is defined by a L, I, comma, K. That's what I mean by saying that the operators act by the group multiplication law. You simply figure out which what A, I, A, K is in the group table, and that's the element you get. Now, this is even clearer. Let me just, in Dirac notation, we would write AI operating on the ket AK. This would be defined by the ket AI AK, which is equal to AL I comma K. So, same thing. Here it's harder to distinguish the operator from the element. And Dirac notation is clear, you know, where we are in that sense. So that's why the Dirac notation is a little bit better. Now, if we act on a general element, if we have an element of the group algebra, equal to the sum over k, ak, ak, then as always with linear algebra, we define ai operating on a, And um, in case you're wondering, you know, in the previous lecture we dealt a lot with left ideals. Um, the reason why uh, we usually deal with left ideals in the uh, group algebra AG is that operators, by our usual convention, act from the left. Okay. Um, so, so we can represent represent the uh, actions of the 
group operators on on the group algebra by a set of n matrices you know one for each element of the group um, using our general rule that uh, was discussed early on in uh, Shannestead Lecture Lecture 2 Equation 2.5 and if you remember just uh, there that I'll copy down that equation AJ, which is an operator acting on FI, which is a basis element, equal to the sum from K equal 1 to lambda gamma AJ KI FK. I equal 1 comma 2 comma lambda we have lambda basis elements lambda dimensional representation j equal 1 comma 2 you know the order of the group now for the regular rep the number of uh, basis elements lambda is just n the order of the group so we have AJ acting on AI is equal to the sum from K equal 1 to N. Now we're going to denote the regular representation always by gamma R. AJ. KI AK. Now this over here is equal to A L J comma I. And since the uh, group elements are obviously independent, we're using them as a basis. We must have Gamma R, we want to determine what these coefficients are. Well, clearly this has to be 1 when K is L, so that we get the one element and it has to be 0 for everything else. So I'll use the uh, discrete Dirac delta function to indicate that. Remember, if, in case you in case you don't have a background in physics or whatever, del A B equal one if A equals B and del A B equal zero if A is not equal to B. So what we get is um, gamma R A J K I equal one if K is equal to L 
J comma I. And that's the same thing as saying A J A I equal A K. And it's equal to zero if K is unequal to L J comma I or A J A I is unequal to A K. Okay, so, so all the uh, elements, as you can see, it's a fairly easy representation. All the elements are 0 or 1 of the representation. And using properties of groups, that very elementary properties that we established earlier, there is a single one in each row and column. So let me just show you a quick example of this. Here we have our standard dihedral group with six elements and this is the group multiplication table. And um, in the book, took this out of Shannon's book, we listed six different representations. Well, gamma 6 is the rec regular representation. And you can check it yourself. If you take an element like C, you can see that on the second row and the first column, there's a 1. You can see each row has a 1 and each column has a 1. And remember, the definition is, is that... Um, since C is like the second element, the way I've ordered it here, C is like the second element of the group, so that would correspond to saying basically that um, A2, which is C, times the first element of the group, which is the identity, CE equals C. So that's 1. And then, you know, you can get all these other elements just by checking that formula that I just gave you on the iPad. So all you have to do is, you, you know, you sort of just, for a given matrix, you just look at the, you multiply like sigma 1, this is the fourth element, times C, which is sigma 2. That's the second element. And we get, we get the fifth element. So... If we look at C and we look at the fourth element, we see that there's a one in the fifth column. In the yeah, in the fifth column as expected. So it's very easy to check these and it seems like it's a very trivial um, representation, but it allows us to establish some very interesting properties, which we'll see in a second. So um Let's um, let's compute the characters of the regular rep. So let's start with uh, cot the character in the regular rep of the identity element. This is equal to the sum from m equal 1 to n of gamma r m m. But remember, we, we can see here, we saw that um, we know that uh, gamma r um, of E is the identity matrix. That's true for every rep on the identity element. And you can also check that it establishes our basic formula that we did before. So this is equal to the sum from M equal 1 to N of 1, which is equal to N.
Okay. This is true for any representation. The character and the identity is going to equal to the dimension of the representation. Nothing new there. Now, for a j unequal to the identity element, chi r e, I claim, is equal to zero. And if you go back to that, uh, those representations I saw before, you'll see that there's no element on the diagonal. Now let's show why. Okay, so gamma r, our general formula, a j i i, is equal to del i l j comma i. But this means that this is um, non-zero or one, you know, if and only if i equals l j comma i, if and only if a j a i equals a i, and that happens if and only if a j is equal to the identity element of the group, but we, well, but we said we um, posited that a j is unequal to e. So all of the elements gamma r a uh, a j i i for outside of the identity element are zero, and so the character is zero. No uh, no ones on the uh, diagonal. So now. Now we can use some um, equations from lecture three of Shenstead. So first, there's the um, on page thirty three of the book. equation 3.15 we have a criteria for irreducibility and you might remember this so you can look it back again we established this it's equal to n Let's apply to the regular representation. For regular, for gamma r, we have the sum from j equal 1 to n Now, we just established that for one element, the identity element e, it's n, but for all the others it's 0. So this is just the absolute value of chi e squared, which is equal to n squared. And um, all of the other characters These are all zero, as we established. So we get n squared. And n squared is greater than n for n greater than 1. So um, other than for the uh, trivial um, group, other than for the uh, trivial one element, group gamma r g is reducible now when we find a group is reducible we want to know its components and now we'll use the character analysis formula
which we covered earlier in my lectures, but it's also in Shen instead. Let's have an, uh, we want to see how many times each irreducible representation gamma k is contained in the regular representation. And the answer is a very, very nice answer. So if we have gamma r of g is equal to the sum over k, ak, ak are just integers, gamma k g, this is just a formal sum, it's actually a direct sum. physics we would denote it that way. So 317 when we apply it to the regular representation is just it's 1 over n, the order of the group, the sum over the group elements, chi k AJ star chi R AJ. Now, since this is zero, chi R AJ is zero for AJ unequal to E. We have only one term. So we get AK is equal to one over N chi K E. Chi star, well, let's just say chi r e, it's chi k e star, I'm sorry, but it's chi r e, and this is equal to 1 over n. The character of any rep on the identity element is always the dimension of the representation, lambda k character of the identity is also the dimension of the representation and the regular representation has dimension n and it's n as we established is equal to lambda k. So this is a very interesting result. Each irreducible rep gamma k appears in the reduction series for gamma r lambda k times. So think about that. We've established two things. We've established that Every irreducible representation appears in the regular representation. So if we want to get all the irreducible representations of a group, we can just get the regular representation, which is easy. Reduce it. That's hard, but theoretically possible. Reduce it, and we will get uh, each irreducible representation a number of times lambda k equal to its dimension. So... Um, if we completely, somehow, just saying theoretically, because we know it's possible, if we completely reduce the regular rep, it will look like we're going to get gamma r is going to look like this. We're going to get a big matrix and we're going to have blocks along the diagonal. Gamma 1 every uh, representation has the uh, trivial identity representation where we assign each group 
one element, so that's going to occur once. Then we're going to have gamma 2. We don't know how many times it is, but it's like gamma 2, gamma 2, gamma 2. You know, so this is going to be lambda 2 times, whatever the dimension of the second irreducible representation is. Then we're going to have like gamma 3, gamma 3, you know. two times. Then we're going to have lambda three times and then eventually we're going to get usually we call R the number of irreducible representations so our last one is always gamma R and lambda R times. So this is sort of the way it will look. Now we can prove something that we didn't quite prove before an important identity which is okay how many rows let's equate the number of rows or columns on each side well we know that gamma r has is an n-dimensional representation because there are n group elements. So we get n is equal to. Now each each matrix lambda k each lambda k has k rows columns and there are lambda k of them. So that's lambda squared k. If we add them all up, we're going to get lambda 1 squared plus lambda 2 squared dot 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 lambda r squared. And this is a, an important result that sometimes let you, at least for small groups, you, there's only a limited number of solutions of this, and you can get the, uh, the dimensions of the small representations of, of some groups. So I want to stop there. We'll continue next time with um, projection operators. And um, it will get a little bit more technical as we go on, but thank you for watching. Remember, um, there aren't really that many deep ideas here. It's just mostly notation. So um, just keep reviewing the notation. We'll see you next time.